What's up, y'all? This is top 20 George Carlin moments. It looks like this is about to show us 20 through 16. Um, comment below if y'all want me to watch the rest of these. Make sure you hit that like button and, of course, hit that subscribe button. Um, I just reacted to a dirty arty video, but I did not have my volume on my mic turned on because of some stupid reason. But just got to keep moving forward. All right, let's jump into this video, man. Rest in peace, George Carlin. Well, folks, here's something else I got a problem with. The Ten Commandments. Here's my problem. Why are there ten? You don't need ten. I think the list of commandments was deliberately and artificially inflated to get it up to ten. It's a padded list. Here's what they did. About 5,000 years ago, a bunch of religious and political hustlers got together to try to figure out how to control people, how to keep them in line. They knew people were basically stupid and would believe anything they were told, so they announced that God had given them some commandments. Up on the mountain, when no one was around, God had given them the Ten Commandments. But let me ask you this. When they were sitting around making this shit up, why did they pick ten? Why ten? Why not nine or eleven? I'll tell you why. Because ten sounds official. Ten sounds important. They knew if it was eleven, people wouldn't take it seriously. So what, are you kidding me? The eleven commandments? Get the fuck out of here. But ten. Ten sounds important. Ten is the basis for the decimal system. It's a decade. It's a psychologically satisfying number. The top ten, the ten most wanted, the ten best dressed. So having ten commandments was really a marketing decision. <laughs> and to me, it's clearly a bullshit list. It's a political document artificially inflated to sell better. I'm going to show you how you could reduce the number of commandments and come up with a list that's a little more workable and logical. We're going to start with the first three, and I'll use the Roman Catholic version because those are the ones I was taught as a little boy. I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath. Right off the bat, the first three, pure bullshit. <laughs> Sabbath. Sabbath day, Lord's name, strange gods, spooky language, <laughs> spooky language, designed to scare and control primitive people. In no way does superstitious nonsense like this apply to the lives of intelligent, civilized humans in the 21st century. You throw out the first three commandments, whoosh, you're down to seven. Next, honor thy father and mother, obedience, respect for authority just another name for controlling people. The truth is, obedience and respect should not be automatic. They should be earned. They should be based on the parents' performance. <laughs> parents' performance. Right? Some, some parents deserve respect. Most of them don't. Period. <laughs> You're down to six. Now, in the interest of logic, something religion is very uncomfortable with, we're going to jump around the list a little bit. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Stealing and lying. Well, actually, these two both prohibit the same kind of behavior. Dishonesty, stealing, and lying. So you don't need two of them. Instead, you combine them and you call it, thou shalt not be dishonest. And suddenly, you're down to five. And as long as we're combining, I have two others that belong together. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Once again, these two prohibit the same kind of behavior, in this case, marital infidelity. The difference is coveting takes place in the mind, and I don't think you should outlaw fantasizing about someone else's wife. Otherwise, what's a guy going to think about when he's waxing his carrot? <laughs> but, but marital fidelity is a good idea, so we're going to keep the idea and call this one, Thou shalt not be unfaithful. And suddenly, we're down to four. But when you think about it, honesty and fidelity are really part of the same overall value. So in truth, you could combine the two honesty commandments with the two fidelity commandments and give them simpler language, positive language instead of negative, and call the whole thing, thou shalt always be honest and faithful, and we're down to three. Thou shalt, thou shalt, they're going away, they're going away fast. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. 
This one is just plain fucking stupid. <laughs> Coveting your neighbor's goods is what keeps the economy going. <laughs> all right? Your neighbor gets a vibrator that plays Oh Come All Ye Faithful. <laughs> you want to get one too. <laughs> coveting creates jobs. Leave it alone. You throw out coveting and you're down to two now. The big honesty and fidelity commandment and the one we haven't talked about yet. Thou shalt not kill. Murder. The fifth commandment. But when you think about it, <laughs> when you think about it, Religion has never really had a big problem with murder. Not really. More people have been killed in the name of God than for any other reason. All you have to do... Uh -huh. All you have to do is look at Northern Ireland, the Middle East, Kashmir, the Inquisition, the Crusades, and the World Trade Center to see how seriously the religious folks take Thou Shalt Not Kill. The more devout they are, the more they see murder as being negotiable. It's negotiable. You know? It depends. It depends. It depends on who's doing the killing and who's getting killed. So, with all of this in mind, I leave you with my revised list of the two commandments. Thou shalt always be honest and faithful to the provider of thy nookie. And thou shalt try real hard not to kill anyone. Unless, of course, they pray to a different invisible man from the one you pray to. Two is all you need. Moses could have carried him down the hill in his fucking pocket. And if they had a list like that, I wouldn't mind those folks in Alabama putting it up on the courthouse wall. As long as they included one additional commandment, thou shalt keep thy religion to thyself. That was very interesting. interesting. What do y'all think about that? What y'all think about that, man? That was a very interesting uh, opinion on this, on things. But I want you to know, I want you to know something. This is sincere. I want you to know, when it comes to believing in God, I really tried. I really, really tried. I tried to believe that there is a God who created each of us in his own image and likeness, loves us very much, and keeps a close eye on things. I really tried to believe that, but I got to tell you, the longer you live, the more you look around, the more you realize something is fucked up. <laughs> something is wrong here. War, disease, death, destruction, hunger, filth, poverty, torture, crime, corruption, and the ice capades. <laughs> Something is definitely wrong. This is not good work. If this is the best God can do, I am not impressed. Results like these do not belong on the resume of a supreme being. This is the kind of shit you'd expect from an office temp with a bad attitude. <laughs> and just between you and me, in between you and me, in any decently run universe, this guy would have been out on his all-powerful ass a long time ago. <laughs> and by the way, I say this guy because I firmly believe, looking at these results, that if there is a God, it has to be a man. No woman could or would ever fuck things up like this. Now, here's another example of overprotection. For that last one, I just feel like on Earth, humans are the rulers of the earth right and y'all know how we are bro y'all know how we are don't lie to yourself you put us in control over all this man we gonna do crazy things man people like to blame god for what's going on in the world but at the end of the day uh we the ones here with free will making all these decisions you know what i'm saying some people in some places don't really care about of people in other places you know what i'm saying so i don't know do you ever notice on the tv news every time some guy with an ak-47 strolls onto a schoolyard and kills three or four kids and a couple of teachers the next day the next day the school is overrun with counselors and psychiatrists and grief counselors and trauma therapists trying to help the children cope shit when I was in school, someone came to our school and killed three or four of us. We went right on with our arithmetic. <laughs> Thirty-five classmates minus four <laughs> equals thirty-one. 
I'll tell you what they ought to do about homelessness. First thing, change the name of it. Change the name of the condition. It's not homelessness. It's houselessness. It's houses these people need. A home is an abstract idea. A home is a setting. It's a state of mind. These people need houses, physical, tangible structures. But where are you going to put them? Where are you going to build them? Nobody wants you to build low-cost housing near their house. People don't want it near them. We got something in this country, you've heard of it, it's called NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y. Not in my backyard. People don't want any kind of social help located anywhere near them. You try to open up a halfway house, try to open up a rehab center for drugs or alcohol, try to build a little home for some retarded people who want to work their way into the community. People say, not in my backyard. People don't want anything near them, especially if it might help somebody else. Part of the great American spirit of generosity we're always told about. <laughs> Big, generous American nation. Ask an Indian about that. Ask an Indian how generous this country is. If you can find one, you gotta locate the Indian first. We've made him just a little difficult to find. Or, if you need current data, select a black family at random and ask them how generous this country has been. People don't want anything near them, even if it's something they believe in, something they think society needs, like prisons. Everybody wants that, right? Everybody wants more prisons. That's the new answer to all of our problems. Lock a lot of motherfuckers up. Everybody wants more prisons. They say, build more prisons! But not here. But well, why not? What's wrong? What's the problem? What's wrong with having a prison in your neighborhood? It would seem to me like it would make it a pretty crime-free area, don't you think? You think a lot of crackheads and muggers and pimps and hookers are going to hang around in front of a fucking prison? Bullshit, they ain't coming anywhere near it. What's wrong with these people? All the criminals are locked up behind the walls. If a couple of them do break out, what do you think they're going to do? Hang around? Check real estate trends? Bullshit. They're fucking gone. That's the whole idea of breaking out of prison, is to get the fuck as far away as you possibly can. That's true. Hey, a lot of... Meet Tyler. That's Tyler's true. the head of HR, and trains the team true what he was saying firm. about that one. I ain't gonna lie. What's his last one? I got just the place for low-cost housing. I have solved this problem. I know where Golf we can courses. build housing for the homeless. Golf courses. Man, I've seen this one before. Uh... This is pretty old, I think. I think this was like, uh, oh yeah, ninety two right here. Um, uh, I know people that play golf. I don't play golf. Mini golf, mini golf is chill, but I don't got time for golf. Golf. Uh, I don't even watch it. Even when Tiger Woods is playing, I don't watch it. I don't watch it. I'm sorry, it's just not entertaining. They telling you to hush all the time. No, what am I doing? I can't even hardly see the ball when y'all hit it. You know what I'm saying? But that's the end of the video, man. Make sure you hit the comment sections. Let me know how y'all think about what he had to say. Make sure you let me know if you want me to react to the next 15 through, I think, like, what, 11? I think it'll be 15 through 11. Um, George Carlin, very funny but more insightful, definitely. I'm not going to say I agree with everything he says, obviously. I don't think he believes everything he says. Some of it, I think, is a little exaggerated. But, um... Just for like you know comedy person purposes, but definitely a a well thought out person right right here. Like I said, don't agree with everything he says, but you know everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's why you got that comment section down there. You can go ahead and slap down one of them comments like, "Wow, let me know what you think." All right, peace.